In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at how you add maps to an ArcGIS Pro project and uh, how you uh, add layers to those maps and also cover some basic symbology options for the layers that you do add to the maps. So I currently have a, an ArcGIS Pro project loaded called uh, Wildfires. I have a single map in my project just simply called Map. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to add a new map uh, to this project because again you can add multiple maps, as many maps as you want to your projects and that incl can include 2D maps uh, as well as 3D maps uh, or custom base maps. Now there's a couple ways you can add a new map to a project in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, you can go to the insert tab and there's a new map button. When you select new map that adds a new two-dimensional map to your project. The other way of doing this is simply to go to, ca your, to, go to your catalog pane, uh, find the map section, right click on it and select new map. Now it gives a default name to the map Right, and uh, also loads the map into the view. And by default, it will also load the world topographic map as your base map. You can rename these maps by right clicking. So if I right click and uh, I'll just call this one wildfire map. So you can change it. You can see it's changed, updated it here and here. I've already got my base map. Uh, now, when it comes to adding layers uh, uh, to your map, there are a number of different ways you can do this. Right? You do have the add data button on the map tab. So if you click the map tab, click add data, that will open up um, a pane that will then allow you to navigate to the location of the layer that you want to add. And then, uh, then you can kind of go from there. So you'll see that there's a project section, databases, right? And I can kind of drill down, open these up. Oh, that one's empty. Uh, so for, the, for this particular geo database, this wild Wildland Fires Geodatabase, I have uh, uh, one point layer and one standalone table. I can click that to add it. And then that will add the layer uh, to the map. Other ways of doing this would include dragging and dropping. So you can, uh, in your catalog pane, drag and drop directly from any geodatabases that you've established. All right, so I could drag and drop. That effectively does the same thing as the Add Data button. You can also copy and paste uh, from, one, from one map to another. I'm just going to delete these real quick because I don't really need them. just want to show you some examples. Now you can copy and paste from one map to another. So if I go back to my original map, I've got this wild, uh, wildfire points map. If I right click, select copy, and then go back to my new wildfire map, right click and select paste, you can see that I've added the wildfire points back. And I'll go ahead and zoom to the layer. All right, so that's kind of the basics of adding uh, layers into your maps. Now, of course, you can symbolize these layers in different ways. Uh, you could right-click on a layer to initiate the color palette. It allows you to very quickly uh, change colors if you need to. Uh, there may be times when you want to change the styles, right? And in this case, uh, I have a style that I want to load from my favorites. I've got a wildfire style that I want to use, and I'll add that to the project. Now you notice I've added a wildfire style to my project. Now, when I left click on the point, you'll notice that it has loaded up some styles specific to wildfires. All right, so I can add this as a hotspot, change this to symbology. Right, so pretty easy to change the symbology through that symbol. This is called the symbology gallery. Uh, you can uh, access other properties here, right? You can change the size uh, and a few other properties here as well if you need to do that. Now, if you need to go into more complex um, symbology operations, you would go to Appearance. Well, you'll first need to select the layer, then go to Appearance. Under Symbology, you have the ability to define different uh, ways of rendering your data. Right? So single symbol, unique values, graduated colors. All right, so for this case, particular case, I might want to create a graduated color map based on the acreage burned uh, for my wildfire. Uh, I could certainly do that. I'm going to go into the details of um, symbolizing your layers in a lot more detail in a later uh, demonstration. So I'm not going to go, th going to go through the details uh, for this particular demonstration. I'm just kind of highlighting some of the basics here uh, at this point. Now you can also add content from uh, your portal connections as well. This of course is defined by, by how you've logged into ArcGIS Pro. If you go to portal, I'm logged into ArcGIS Online. So you know, we've got multiple buttons here, including uh, my content, 
Uh, I don't have any favorites here for this particular data set. It's my groups. Uh, I'm primarily primarily going to focus on the Living Atlas for this particular demonstration. Uh, I know it has some wildfire data, so I'm going to type in wildfire. And you can see it has a USA current wildfires layer. Uh, this wildfire points layer that I have loaded, that's historical data, but you might have a situation where you want to be able to display the current wildfire data. And so you can go to the Living Atlas button. Living Atlas is Esri curated content, so it's content that they either they are creating, producing, and updating, or that they are working with a third party uh, to provide that content on. So from there, I could drag and drop. Oh, doesn't like that one for some reason. Now, that's some, you know, sometimes you'll run into these situations where you're trying to access content um, uh, through, through a portal that doesn't necessarily, um, you know, for one reason or another, it'll fail. I'll try it one more time. Yeah, it's not there. All right, so for whatever reason, that particular layer, all right, couldn't load the content. All right, but you can see I have other content here as well. So I might want to add USA fire burned areas. And you can see it adds that content. So there's my fire burned areas. I could add in things like fire perimeters for a particular year. Um, but that first layer that I tried to load here from Portal, you know, this USA Current Wildfires, I've been able to load this successfully without any problems in the past. I'm not exactly sure why it's not loading now, but that it's, you know, that's kind of a good thing to point out here is that you can't always count on these layers being present, um, whether it's the Living Atlas data, which usually is pretty reliable, or whether you're using ArcGIS online content. You don't have control over the, those data sets, right? Somebody else created them, they're hosting them, they're updating them. So you can't always count on those layers being uh, there and being uh, accessible for you. Uh, now, if you click this button just to the left of Living Atlas, this is the ArcGIS Online button. This is any publicly available content through ArcGIS Online. So there, I, I know there's another wildfire layer here. I'm going to try this one to see if we have any more luck. No, no luck there either. So just keep in mind, right? This, you know, some of these layers may or may not be accessible. You don't always know where these layers are coming from, and you don't always know uh, if they're going to be present uh, when you load up a project and, and attempt to work on them. All right, so uh, that's all I really needed to show you this time. Just kind of wanted to go over the highlights of uh, adding maps to your project. And again, you can add as many maps as you want to a project. Each map can have its own set of content in terms of layers. Those layers can be symbolized in different ways. You have a lot of different options for how you symbolize those layers. And uh, of course, you can add content uh, that's coming from a local source, a local uh, geodatabase or ArcSDE geodatabase, or it can be coming content that comes from ArcGIS Online or from Portal or other web services. Uh, so a lot of different options here for how you add content. Just keep in mind that you don't always have full control over some of the content, especially when it's being provided uh, through a portal connection. So, all right, that's all I wanted to cover this time. I uh, appreciate you joining me and we'll see you next time.